So some of the research I do is, is very much about devices and fundamental uh, property materials. And sometimes it's a bit more esoteric. So this material is quartz. Uh, it's a very common uh, compound and it's found inside the Earth's crust. And it's a simple material made of silicon and oxygen. And as you go deeper and deeper into the Earth's core, quartz starts to um, disappear and other uh, compounds, other um, minerals take its place. So there's an interesting um, story about how the minerals change with depth as you go into the Earth's core, and that's because of the temperature and the pressure. So it gets people thinking about what are materials like under very high temperature and pressure. And can we understand that? Can we predict the properties of materials? What's actually down there as you go down into the floor, go down through the rocks, go down into the crust, you go into the liquid, and then eventually the very, very centre of the earth you believe is solid. What's it made of? What's the material like? How do we understand that? It can't go there and do the experiment. It's incredibly difficult to reproduce those temperature pressures in a lab, but with the computer modelling, we can do that straightforwardly. So we have a program of research looking at materials under extreme conditions. We can do the Earth's core, and then we look at materials like iron, and what is iron like at a temperature of a few thousand degrees and pressures of millions of atmospheres. We can go beyond Earth, we go to other planets. So we've published papers looking at um, the centre of Jupiter. What happens at Jupiter? So the outside of Jupiter is, uh, we can see from the clouds, is mostly methane and hydrogen and helium and a bit of ammonia. So if you imagine methane is carbon and hydrogen, and methane is more dense than hydrogen and helium, so it should sink to the bottom. So the centre of Jupiter should be very rich in methane. If you take methane under very high temperature and pressure, maybe the pressure could break down the compound. And so you've got lots of carbon. And carbon under very high temperature and pressure, oh, that becomes carbon diamond. So maybe, people started thinking, maybe the centre of Jupiter is a giant diamond. So how can you explore these ideas? You can't go there and have a look. We sent probes in and they destroy within a, a few miles into the atmosphere. And Jupiter is a massive planet, you can't get anywhere near the centre of it. So how do you understand materials under these kind of conditions? So we can have fun, we can explore these ideas. It's pure physics, but it has an interest to the people doing astrophysics. To people doing um, planetary science and planetary evolution, can we understand and use the same techniques, the same code, it's all about materials, and apply it in all these different areas. This is another material. This is um, uh, a man-made crystal. Um, this material is bismuth. So bismuth is one of those elements on the periodic table you may have heard of. And uh, it's, it's been made from uh, a seed crystal put into a vat of molten bismuth and it's grown out in all these beautiful shapes so you can see the crystal structure. But if you look carefully you can see that the angles aren't quite right angles. It's just not quite right. Is that because I bent it and sat on it? No, this is... Oh, okay, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> This is supposed to be very tough. Normally when you grow crystals, the angles are perfect numbers like 90 or 120. And this, for some reason, is 89. And that just irritates me. That just shouldn't be there. That's just wrong, right? Why has nature chosen 89 degrees? So that's this. I keep this on my, on my desk to remind me that one day, and I've got a few spare moments, I have to try and tackle the puzzle of why is bismuth awkward? Why is it 89 degrees, not 90? But another chunk of, of material I've got here is another, it's a man-made material, it's called silicon carbide. So uh, you may be aware that uh, carbon exists in various forms, it's got carbon graphite and carbon diamond. And carbon diamond has uh, a crystal structure a bit like this. So the black blobs are the carbon atoms, the green lines are the bonds, and it's got this three-dimensional crystal structure, we call it the diamond structure. So it's a very, very strong ultra-hard material, and uh, we would love to be able to use it uh, in industrial applications, it's so strong, it's so tough, you can use it to cut anything. The problem is that getting big lumps of diamond is quite expensive and, and uh, your, your wife or your girlfriend might not appreciate you uh, wrecking their ring just to put something on the end of a tip to, to cut a piece of metal. Another material that's very, very common is silicon. So here's my silicon model. And silicon's got exactly the same crystal structure as diamond. Uh, silicon is next door neighbours to, to carbon in the periodic table, it's in the same column. It's got very, very similar chemical properties, but it's not a tough material. It's quite a soft material. It's about five times weaker than, than diamond. But the crystal structure is very, very similar. So that got people wondering, and so they artificially made this material, which is silicon carbide. 
So it's taken uh, a, a silicon crystal and they replaced every other atom. The crystal structure is exactly the same, it grows together. And unlike silicon, which is a soft material, silicon carbide is a really hard material. It's cheap to make, we can mass produce it in big lumps. This lump of rock here didn't cost me very many pounds to buy. If that was a pure diamond, uh, it would cost an awful lot of pounds to buy. Um, but you can make it very, very cheaply and it's ultra hard. You can use it as, as a tip in a machine tool for cutting things and it's far, far cheaper than diamond. So that's an example of a man-made material that's not naturally occurring. It's quite uh, beautiful to look at. Um, and you can see it's got these, these very, very hard, very, very, um, this will cut your fingers very quickly, um, these very, very sharp uh, little, like little crystals in it. Uh, and each one of those you could use as a cutting tip on a tool. Um, so that's a man-made material and something else that we study.